gonna miss you guys so bad. Like, we are still gonna have this, right? Like, even if we're not at the same school? Yeah, together wherever, right? Yeah, if we're lucky. I'll have you guys over all the time to try my weird food experiments. I applied to like 300 culinary programs, but I don't know. The more real it gets, the more it's like, ugh. No, you see, <laughs> nothing set in stone, dude. It isn't real till it's real. I mean, I guess, but I'm pretty sure cooking is it for me. This feels like make or break. Ha, more like make or bake. <laughs> Ugh, you've been spending too much time with Nasser. Anyway, I'm not really worried about which place I go to. It doesn't matter where I do it as long as I get to do it, you know? I just want to be able to do it. I mean, first of all, you're going to be amazing. And you know your girl is always ready to taste test. Okay, but you actually have to tell me if something sucks, though. Babe, I always tell you the truth. It's not my fault you're a literal culinary superstar. Plus, I'll have nothing but time. Yeah? What are you doing next year? I think I'm gonna take a year or two to feel things out. See what vibes. I'm trying not to put anything into a box just yet. That's pretty cool, actually. I don't get why everyone is so obsessed with college. I have literal nightmares about it. Oh, I'm definitely going someday. I just feel like, why not have some fun, too? I can get behind that. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about next year, actually. Not the word I'd use. You don't think about what you'll be doing? Yeah, uh... Oh, definitely. Um... I guess, if I'm around, I'll take a creative writing or game design class. You'd be so great at either one. Yeah, you already totally have the writing thing down. Like, you in l and I, I don't know how you do it. Thanks. Weird how it kind of became my life. Great, great. So, everyone has it all figured out. You must have some ideas. What are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. I've just spent all this time on, like, bug camp and soft circuits and welding and whatever, and... I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. That just means you can do anything. Seriously, you're like one of the smartest people. It's true. What if you just pick something? I mean, you'd be good at anything. But actually, I mean, what takes up most of your brain space right now? What about, you and Rosa are always talking about your worm, Mango? My baby. <laughs> So why not, like, worm science? Entomology? See? Bugs are kind of your thing. That time we tried to do ASMR, you whispered about molting cycles for, like, half an hour. <sighs> I don't know, guys. What if I change my mind in a year? What if I suck at it? You don't have to go if you don't want to. Right, you're not going at all. That's even scarier, honestly. But, but, but you'll be great. Music is like a sure thing for you. I mean, it kinda has to be. I've never seen a future without worm drama. I mean, if we're lucky, things will take off after Caldera Fest. But who knows? They will. I can feel it. And we're gonna be there to cheer you on. <laughs> I hope so. Nope. No way. Nope. Nope.
check out this cafeteria. There's a taco station and a wrap station. Separate stations! Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Look at all these entomology courses. There's an entire class just on spider biology. I looked it up. It has six different textbooks. Oh, <laughs> uh, mm, why not eight? Feels like a missed opportunity. Dude, I'm gonna be the spider queen. What about you, Fang? I think I'm more of a dragonfly wizard. Very cool. I mean, what about your applications? For college? I'm not applying anywhere. Do your parents know that? Because... The Battle of the Bands is my college application. We get that break and we're set. And at least we know the show is actually gonna happen. What does that mean? Ah, uh, not you too. I heard just this morning that even if it does hit, it'll probably land in the ocean. But just think about it. Us, being hit, smack on the nose, out of the huge vastness of the entire galaxy? It's a statistical anomaly. Yeah. Hope you're right. It's just science. Are you worried about it? Not really. It's like you said, what are the odds, right? Exactly. See, Reed? Chill about the space rock. We're here to play, right? Uh, actually, we've got to pick out what we want to play first. Let's do it. seem too happy for it to be the asteroid but maybe true I'm gonna go check it out you coming obviously it's thriving nope not a giant space rock yeah but what is it I created a new species. The Rosa Fern, no. Fern Tasma, no. Fern and up. Sick fern, dude. Uh. Fern unit. Fernando? Yes! Living fern. Mm, Copernicus. Phenomenon. <clears throat> Weird fern. I know, it's not for looks, but just to show colleges that I know about grafting and interspecies selective cell regeneration. You learned about this because I was looking into plants for Mango's tank? See, this part down here is the rootstock, and this is the scion. This particular rootstock is famously resistant to velvet worms who will, ordinarily, eat the shit out of almost any plant like the adorable monsters they are. So take that rootstock and add a vulnerable plant to scion, and boom! Bug proof leaves, baby. Okay, okay, so should it be called Mango Fern? Ah! Ah! Mango Fern! Mango Fern! <laughs> nice. Um, I'm really excited for Battle of the Bands. It's gonna be great. Oh, yeah, have... Me too, and l, l tonight, right? What are we gonna do about Cap? I guess I'll just have to marry him. Never. Hmm, officiating an l, l wedding would be cool, but Cap would still totally kill you. <gasps> My guitar! Oh, I left it in the music room. See you tonight. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go too. That plant thing is freaking me out. I know I'm biased, but you're my favorite band in the battle. Like, hands down. Thanks. That's, um, that's really cool of you to say. I know things are gonna work out for your music, Fang. You've got something really special. Yeah. And your plant is... A crime against nature. Wait, 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 wait. I think it's looking at me. Stop! You're gonna get into a good college, for sure. Bright future, big dreams, everything Roberts is always talking about. You know, I'm gonna stay up here. Oh, are you? I think Coach Connor actually appreciates it when I skip PE. See you at LNL. See ya. Hey, what did I miss? Can I talk to you for a sec? So, remember that entomology program I was talking about? That's it. That's my plan. I mean, I know, I just did tendrils and just got mango, but I've been thinking about how we were always kind of into worms and stuff, even as kids. We had that comic, we named our band Worm Drama, all those weird costumes. <laughs> My mom still isn't over the dress incident. So <laughs> worth it. Anyway, I think this is what I want to do. Bugs and worms. But like, for a job. Forever. <sighs> it feels really good when I say it out loud. So, like, what do you think? I mean, I can totally see you as a bug doctor or whatever, but what about the band? So, yeah, the band. Anyway, you know how Rosa made that whole plant thing for college applications? Turns out you pretty much have to do something big like that to even get noticed by most schools. I'm working on this way to restore velvet worm habitats by turning trash into food for them, but it's gonna take a lot of hours with mango and about a dozen different types of compost heaps to check all the variables and allow time for propagation and I think I need a break from the band for a while. The Battle of the Bands is gonna be my last show. Say something? Um, just, just. <laughs> you will not. Half is mine. Maybe we can share him? You guys, he's evil. Adventurers, this way, this way. So you're just done? For now. For now. I just want to focus on my future. Well, what about our future? Ah, uh, oi, Ali. You ready to conquer this quest? Hell yes. I'm ready to kick some Brax's butt. Faye? You ready? Join us, Dark One! Yeah. Okay. Let's play. All right, everyone have their snacks all set up? Okay, okay. 
Here we go. Previously on LNL, the party decided to search the Library of Ages for information that would aid them in their fight against the cult of Braxis and their disarmingly handsome leader, Keth. You all came across the Eternal Nautilus. You and, after some trial and error, you were able to gain entry to the Library of Ages. Inside, you battled a magical book. Jeff found the Necronomicon. And with the help of Dewey, you uncovered the locations of the Blightbane Axe and the temple in the Ocean of Sand. Back on the ship, though, you ran into Kef and were able to best him. But he managed to escape in fantastic fashion before you could land the killing blow. You've been quiet, Faye. What say you to all this? The Vagrant heads out to the Ocean of Sand in search of the Lost Temple. The trek will be long and arduous. Okay, Jeff and Linnea begin exploring. Linnea, with your excellent search skill, you notice a small glow coming off a rock. Not just a bunch of sand. There are some small runes giving off this glow. They're quite small. How hard are you focusing on them? And what languages do you know? Yeah, you can't read it. <laughs> Fine, you can read it. Quicksand. At this point, you're about waist deep. Everyone rushes over. All right, you're able to breathe just fine, and you continue sinking. Then your sinking turns into falling. As you drop down, you land on a platform. The roiling quicksand above you is a lit, swirling gold. In front of you, you see a set of doors. The ceiling of the temple is made of glowing sand, which casts golden light over everything. A large spiral stairway leads down, the sandy steps sparkling and glittering. Set into the wall on the way down are these massive reliefs, murals made of glowing sand. 
The murals are inlaid with the lightning-touched glass that reflects and changes color. One figure is clad in dark robes, and their hands come together at their stomach, holding a crystal ball. Another figure stands tall, their arms outstretched. A spear laid across their palms, held upwards to the heavens. The final figure sits cross-legged, and above their head a pale sword hangs, defying gravity, pointing down at their skull. As you pass through the threshold, you enter a large open space. The room itself looks to be two stories tall, with four columns distributed around the space. The perimeter of the hall is a curtain of slowly shifting sand. The air in here is very stale. It's quiet, save for the gentle whoosh of the sand cascading down the walls. In the center of the room, there's a large altar made of the same glowing translucent glass as you saw in the murals. As you draw closer, you see... Ah, here it is. The altar is a massive triangular plinth of glass that has a dull glow from within, but the surface is polished, so it's almost a mirror. On each of three sides is an intricately carved image, and lying on top is an ancient skeleton wearing a gleaming set of polished plate armor. One of the skeleton's arms is outstretched toward the ceiling. In the other is a large sword. There are scorch marks under the skeleton. <laughs> on one of the sides, there is an image of a skull. On another, there is a pictograph of a winged animal. On the third, there is an image of a hand. Do you place your hand in the sand? Do you? You touch your symbol, and the rest of you feel a deep vibration in your chest as Linnea casts the spell and a small disk of light appears above the skeleton. You all feel your breath slightly leave your body as the disk enlarges and plunges into the skeleton. It gasps and slowly sits up. The skeleton cocks its head, staring at you. It raises its sword at you. Oh, I know what it says. Everyone, roll initiative. Nea, you're first, then Jeff, then Faye. The skeleton is advancing on you. What do you do? The skeleton lurches forward, grabbing you by the front of your clothes and raising its sword menacingly. You get the sense that it does not have good feelings towards nurturing parental figures. No. How good is your aim? In that case, the spoon sails through the air and straight through its ribs and out the other side, taking a big chunk with it. The skeleton releases Linnea and stumbles back, stunned. All right, you're up, Faye. Your side smashes into the skeleton with a cloud of bone dust, knocking one of its arms off at the shoulder and breaking a few ribs. The 
The skeleton staggers around with you on its head for a moment, and then throws you off, roaring. The skeleton raises its arm and grasps its face with its gauntlet, and then yanks. It gets flung out of the armor, landing in a mangled heap at your feet. The gauntlets, greaves, and bracers fall away, leaving a glowing curious that floats in the air. Oh, it's the chest part of the armor. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I've only ever read that word. Anyway... Faye, you're standing near the altar as this happens, and as you look in its mirrored surface, you seem to notice your reflection moving slightly. As you stare, glowing eyes burst out from your reflection scales. Ugh, now what are we supposed to do? Who is Mammoth? Mm, I hate it when he texts people. Come on, Faye, tell us. Are you sure? You don the armor. As soon as you do, it constricts suddenly, fusing into your skin. A huge wave of energy bursts outward as everyone but Linnea is knocked off their feet. The sand columns in the room explode outward. You all feel the ground quaking as massive pieces of the ceiling fall and explode in sprays of sand. As this is happening, Linnea, you hear a quiet voice echo in your head. You watch as Linnea begins levitating upwards. A huge piece of ceiling lands on the altar, and it explodes in shards of glass. You all grab on as more chunks smash downward. The suit lurches to the side, plunging into the veil of sand on the wall. You are all momentarily blinded, but the sand feels warm around you, like calm water. Then, your stomachs lurch as you feel yourself rocket upward. You burst out of the sand, hurtling high above the dunes, until you all come arcing down onto the deck of the Vagrant. You all retire to your quarters and turn in. But Faye, you spend some time struggling to fall asleep. And when you finally do, you're suddenly awoken by a light in your eyes. You open them. Does someone have a torch? No, it's coming from outside. You open the door to the deck and step out. You hear it 
before you see it. A slow whine, a whisper coming from this light in the sky. You hear something coming, a whisper tickling at the base of your spine, a single word, cataclysm. Something zips onto the deck beside you. It's a small piece of hail, sizzling. Then zip, zip, zip. More start coming down around you. Then come the screams. The burning hail rains down, tearing through the ship. Everyone is panicking, running. It's chaos. You see Sid and Celeste turn and run full speed off the deck, holding hands as they fall. The light winks out. For an eternity, everything is quiet. Then on the horizon, you see the sunrise. Rays of crimson light crawl across the sky. The whole sky is a dazzling red. It's so peaceful. But your gut knows better. This isn't sunlight. Sunlight doesn't smell like ash. The sky is on fire. You hear the roar now, and your world explodes in pain. The sound is deafening. It's so hot. So inescapably hot. I want it just end. And you wake up. In your bed, on the ship. You glance over at the mirror, but you don't see Faye. You see a shadow. A shadow with a burning red smile that whispers, Hello, Faye. That is where we will end tonight's session. Um, that was... Phew. Bree, dude, what the heck was that last bit? Yeah, that vision you gave Faye was... ominous. Things are reaching their conclusion. Time's almost up. Hey, Trish, can we talk? Sure, but it, it's kind of late, though. Gotta go feed Mango. Sage, walk me home, my cook with the left hook. We'll talk later. Battle of the Bands is gonna be epic. See ya!